So we got to talk to the Kala guys recently, and um, this here is an example of what they're doing in Petaluma, California there for well under a grand. You can get a solid Koa tenor like this. And um, what do you think, Kale? This thing sounds good. Um, I really like the satin finish. And the wood grain on here is... is is pretty unusual too as well it has a nice open sound to it very nice and deep and warm and when you pair it with the, the strings that they have on here it helps bring out all the clarity and the notes come out crystal clear so so today we have um a fun fun show for you guys we have some of the nicest ukes that i think we've we've ever seen yeah, really gorgeous I'm, stuff i mean these ukes are <laughs> on a different level it's gonna be fun Corey just went to go grab some poke <laughs> and um we are gonna be coming back to you guys with some gorgeous new ukes stay tuned da, ukulele, with you. Podcast. think uh needs to see a doctor because it's pretty sick <laughs> it's pretty ill. <laughs> oh, there's. No, just think about it. Normally, when we get like air cues, they come with a bone. You just struggle with a punch. And a string. That's true, but then um, Eric usually uses um, a keyless too. Yeah. You would get way more punch. I, I, don't, I, I like the weight of those. Can you um, hold, like, show the front so that I can try to get, like, I can try to show them the purpling? Oh, the rosette is insane. Yeah, um, bring, yeah bring that closer. is something else. Ablam style thing going around the rosette. Like if you look at it really closely, there's all kinds of like little design details in it that look like I don't know this this you. There's just a lot to look at. And it Visual, smells really good. Visually, <laughs> this it's a stimulating instrument. Who's and Matt? Is that his? Um, is that his <laughs> son? What's that? Is that his son, Matt Petros? I see that and Matt Petros. Oh, maybe. Petros fine handmade ukuleles. Look at that. Even the um, what's that back strip? What's it called? Is that? It's not bracing, right? It's a back strip. The back strip has. It says it's Petros like, it's tenor. It's all laser engraved. 
try to um, show the sound hole on the inside. Let me see if like, and that goes all the way down, which, uh, you know, we couldn't capture, but like that whole back strip. The is, whole like, thing. That's yeah. insane. And if you look at the underneath part, there is a painting of George Washington cutting down the cherry. <laughs> 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 Maybe. Etched on the inside, cut on oh, the cherry tree. Everything. I mean, this is like this would be like the Ferrari, or like uh, a uh, like a Porsche. That would be like a Porsche. This is a Porsche nine eleven GT two, fully loaded. <laughs> You know he um, buffs out the the nut and saddle, so it's like everything is everything is shiny, except the fretboard and the the bridge. Like these tuners, holy crap! They're really slow too. detail um i guess i'm guessing this is koa wood on the fretboard binding but on the third fifth seventh tenth and twelfth fifteen fret there's black and white um purfling in between the maple i guess that's maple so it's koa maple koa maple all throughout the the binding and then it's purfling black and white mm, nice but it's, it's only on the top detail. Of that yeah you know i mean like th this just this has a lot of appeal like to me but i mean i'm the type of person that gets like tattoos all over his arms and stuff but you know for somebody that likes artistic designs and stuff it's pretty damn cool in my opinion and it's like it's it's a it's an intricate design everywhere on the even the look at the yeah so <laughs> like, even on. those are engraved stuff on that too. right so the end pin is Jeez. is I, got a uh, laser engraving in it let me try to get that yeah. <laughs> look the other one has a flower but Ooh, I like man and graph too it's really nice Talk about decked out. The saddle, the saddle is buffalo bone, and uh, also the the piece there at the bottom of the bridge, and then um, the nut is also buffalo bone, and everything's just so nice on this. Yeah, it's like you took a, you know, you go to a fine dining restaurant and everything just has caviar on it. <laughs> Everything is like, oh, yep. <laughs> yep, yeah. this comes caviar. It's got the works. It's like the um, the mid range frequency on this one is is at a good range where it's not, it doesn't have that really nasally kind of sound. Yeah, it does. And the spruce really brings out like, the clarity. I mean, just like with any other ukulele, the spruce really does give you that nice top end sparkle right yeah. at the end. And this is all, I mean, nothing, I'm not talking bad about Aquila's, but Aquila's sound great, but this <laughs> kind of sound from. No, I, I think what you're saying is like, if it sounds as good with Aquila's, then. Because uh, Aquila's are just a standard set of strings that most instruments nowadays come with yeah i mean it's a good middle of the road string that i don't think anybody at this level should be using aquilas me neither i feel like you should experiment with all the types of materials used for strings and try and find out 
what works best for your your build that's what chuck moore did yeah but you know with that said that's just my opinion which is <laughs> you know because i mean there's aquila fans out out there and i i, I yeah. get it you know yeah. i get it because um they don't sound bad at all and especially on a nice cheek like this but uh man you're right though Corey. like about the voice and about like it's it's not a volume thing with these really nice ukes. It's the, mm-hmm. it's the subtleties of the voice. It's all the artic- articulation, you know, and all the the nice overtones that you get from these. It's the quality of the quality. sound. Yeah. It's like when you Every buy note though, like yeah. This is uh, one thing I really like about this instrument is it, is it's, it's completely different from everything else. It so is, sound, yeah. Sound looks. It has its own place in the high end ukulele realm. What, as far as the sound, like, what, how do you think it's different? And maybe, like, what would you closest? What what would be the closest? Uh, I guess. Um, instrument that we've had you know before this is our first experience with petros um it's kind of hard to put it somewhere yeah yeah i i mean that's funny you just said it's like totally like unlike anything else and i'm like so what's it like (laughs) you know but no but it is it, it can be it's it's to me i think it's like this might be really weird like not the right way to word this but it sounds Hawaiian, but not. Mm. It, it has. It's, it's a weird way to put it, but it's a it's a high end sound. Um, if you when you pick notes individually, like through you know these kind of those kind of things, everything is balanced. Everything is well pronounced. He's got a real interesting and like. Um very delicately made kind of a fan uh five fans in there with like a, a nice beautiful scallop to them you know because you got the, like the two top is quite thin but then it's uh it's very stable yeah if you look in the sound hole right here you have one of the bracings here and then you have the three and then the bridge plate even the uh kerfing looks the kerfing yes the kerfing is amazing on these i was looking at that and it looks like it's done in two pieces individually but they're they're tiny and cute yeah it's like oh man it looks does he uh, he doesn't do any finishing inside right like chuck i didn't see that but so bruce is a guitar builder uh i guess originally but got into ukulele recently and um you know he's been building for many years and uh it's like 30 years or something yes yeah, so, i mean these are expensive but it's like it's one of those things where it's like good whiskey or you know the finer things yeah in life. this you know, is like, <laughs> this calls for a, a sip of some 12 year yeah although but, that's but, but that's like, like a 21 year, year. yeah, that's yeah. Like a 30 year <laughs> octomore no <laughs> Uh, you know, it was transferred from regular oak casks to cherry casks in the, <laughs> the second half of its life. It's a 31 age hibiki. <laughs> yeah, like, man, everything, even down to the tuners. I want, yeah. Kalei, let's get you at doing a sample on Did you do, I mean, Not I know yet. you played it. Just, I, you yeah, you didn't actually do. I'm just making love to <laughs> Mm. Uh, you mean you're about to? Four <laughs> like, plays. It's a loud. It's loud, but it's not overly loud. Like some ukuleles that are really loud will be too loud in like a certain frequency. This is just sounding harsh. It doesn't have a. There's no harshness, harshness to it, but there's still a very powerful uh, voice driving the volume. But you can even hear it warming up. Like since when, when we. I tuned it up 
and then wiped it down. Like just the few minutes of noodling on it, I can it's starting to really open up in a short amount of time. Yeah, that's it's it has a piano like I use that word a lot. Piano like quality to the tone, but when when you're playing on like a grand piano and you hit that note, there's like this um it's got it's got a um a punch to yeah the, like with those high notes it's the same it's, effect you get from yeah. the piano when you you hit it on that it's like dun, like you hear the note but it's also the hammer yeah the effect of the hammer hitting the strings mm. inside of the piano you hear that noise and every note is it has like that thumpiness that you hear in like a high-end instrument but this one it's not super loud it's not super flashy and tone but sounds really good it's like someone who just chooses the right words all the time when they're talking (laughs) tasty I feel like it's Aquila's. Aquila's aren't known for having like really long sustain, but this has really, really good yeah. sustain. And it's like yeah, the there's no wild strings there. Yeah. No, no. It's just resonance. Nice. I would like to see what this would sound like by experimenting with different sh- string sets. Yeah. I, I think. It's, it's good enough with the Aquila's. Wow. Yeah, it's already good enough. <laughs> it's like you can really dig into it. back at you.
Yeah, I don't want to put this thing down. <laughs> Ooh, sounds kind of perfect. I want to hear this guy's guitars now. Yeah. Because if he's been building guitars longer than ukuleles, imagine what his guitars sound like. What number ukulele is this? This is like... I don't know. The first on. ones, Let's, right? um... I wonder if he got into it and was like, all right, I'm just going to build a smaller version of my ukulele. I mean, my guitar. And if he had to do any kind of major tweaking of his design to build something that sounds like this. So this is number 26 and is called the Celt. Um, so. Oh, it's so like, oh, like, Kalei, when you play it, play it right above the sound hole. Tenor ukulele number 26, the Celt. So Adirondack spruce is the top, so you got a red spruce top. That's... It seems like the longer you play it, the power. better it keeps sounding. Um, it's like you notice a lot of other things that start... I don't know if it's starting to come out or like... Or it's there and you're just like... Because you're spending you, time with it. Yeah. You're getting to know that ukulele. I mean, like, even like during the festival, um, you know, I could hear... A, a, Even a in big the difference. super yeah. loud festival, you hear it, you're like, whoa, this thing sounds good. Because yeah, we had like like a lot of customers around their booth, and when he brought those two ukes and we got to try them out, I mean, you could hear it. It's clearly coming out. <laughs> such a hey, beast. let's get Kalei to sam sample this guy. But, but Corey doesn't want to give it up. I, I know, right? He's I can't, just like, I can't he's, sorry. He's trying to stall. Sorry. I can't do it. Listen, buddy. You gotta give me some time with this one. Give me nine thousand dollars. <laughs> Ninety-three, right? No, ninety fifty. Well, I just asked you for less, and you said more. <laughs> Bro, I gave you fifty bucks off. <laughs> I'll give you a good deal. Nine. Oh, as it goes. Oh. There's a like, just strum a chord. <laughs> there's but like hit a chord really well and like there's this shimmer that, yeah there is like i don't you don't get that from anything else oh yeah but it's like a it's almost like when you do like yeah you know it's but it's exactly it's subtly it's happening on its own that's crazy kind of voodoo I would describe the sound of this as if like the e you're performing and you leave your EQ flat. It's very balanced. Like you have lows, you got mids, you got highs. And yeah. I guess in this case, it's up to the player to decide what do you want to add. You want to add more trebs, maybe you play with your nail. You know, you want to keep it warm. You know, maybe play Dominant, with your yeah. And it's, it's very unusual for a spruce top instrument to sound like this. This is... Yeah. And if you want to add more lows, you kind of play like around here, you know. Then you get more thumpiness. I think you know, this, versus... like your your picking style, when you if you play right there, like see that would be really bright on some ukes. But it's 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 clear. But I wouldn't I wouldn't say it's like a bright tone. It's balanced, you know. Yeah, like oh can't put my finger on it. it's like you're in a really cold room and you put on this really comfortable blanket that's the kind of warmth you get yeah it is a wool blanket made from the highest quality what are those ones called um the like blankets you can wear that have like arms the, the snuggies snuggies yeah <laughs> oh the onesies it, it, it just engulfs you in this warm Love. <laughs> if love had a feeling. It's if, if love had a sound. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, play uh, your uh, the unknown on here, like the way you play it. This would be. Yeah, no, that's, that would totally work. Like something like on. Hmm.
it's the wow. Like usually ebony and spruce is just really harsh bright. and I wanna hear the the pro art nylon set on here. How it respond. Like you would lose some of the the high end shimmer, but I feel like it could go without it and Yeah, it could still work. It would still sound amazing. Like, I almost feel like if you put like plain nylon sets on, on this you could you would have more room to dig in. Yeah, hell yeah. And it'll still Heck come yes, out I'm nice sorry. clear. <laughs> Heck yes. <laughs> The sound is completely different from everything, really. Like when you listen from the outside or from from the audience, that point of view. Most oh, ukuleles, the way they're, um, well, normally I have a hard time doing that. It's like the bass frequency is it's like he tuned it a certain way it's not that that mid-range that you know that you can already have the yeah, 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 yeah it's, it's like it went like this, just a little bit. There's still the ukulele nasally yeah. kind of sound, but it's like... But it's crystal clear. It's almost like you get... It's like everything. That, it's like that warmth of, that you get when you add compression to your signal in a live performance situation, but not compressed. <laughs> but... Or it's like the, the right level of... Compression, yeah. like you found the sweet spot. Well, this is brand new too. Imagine like what it would sound like after a couple years of playing it. Oh, and put a tone right on there. One week. And by the way, tone rights do work. I own one. <laughs> All right, so we get to compare it now with a Ooh, cola, redwood top, redwood top. Cola side and back. It's a sinker. So this is tenor ukulele yeah. number 29. It's got curly sinker redwood. 5A curly koa. The neck is butternut. Nice lightweight too. Butternut? Like yeah. Butternut, butternut squash. squash. <laughs> yeah, I'm hungry. Huh? Jeez. I, I think it feels similar to like a koala neck. Yeah. It, yeah, it actually does. And it feels comfortable. Yeah. You know. It's just, it's so easy to handle. Like when you're... Like when you're just holding the ukulele in your left hand, mm -hmm. it just I don't know the contour. Oh, okay, okay. Here's a here's a question for you guys. I mean, we can all see the similarities with Divine, right? Yep. Yeah. It's I that. mean, I guess it's hard to compare. His usually come with a low G, right? Like aesthetically, Part. they look similar. Right. It's about um, the same, but then the playability is different because different. Divine. I feel his string spacing is way more narrow. Mm. The neck is uh, a little skinnier it's a little skinnier but there's a certain i feel like his are a little more scooped in the mids too yeah yeah whereas yeah. these are a little bit more forward or mid forward yeah in terms of tonality i just i, just, I hear more mids in this that's mm. what i i that's think that's what i'm paying I, attention, I, I, I more attention feel to like i mean i i yeah. hear the same at the same time there's play it again let me like try to like there's a little bit more oh, it's very um, mid-range mid-range and there's more lows coming through is if you took like the highs from the previous petrol ukulele that we were just playing and kind of like just turned it down at one one deep decibel hmm. and then you would get like this kind of tone from it is it the same volume you think it's the same projection and no the same this volume? one's slightly louder a little too. bit louder yeah i mean i like i remember at the festival when you can't hear anything but i remember this one i was like Whoa, i think this is the first one i tried like so, when we're in the festival, yeah, um, yeah, he was. I didn't actually, was looking at that one. I didn't play it. Play that one. I, got I to played try that one. one, and I was like, "Whoa, this is yeah, this is great. This is something different." Because <laughs> that one, I when when I saw that one in the case, I was like, "Oh." 
I don't know. This you one is. Let me touch that one. This one is impressive, but I think I'm 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 a little bit more more impressed at the the spruce and ebony model. I just love the tone of like redwood and cedar. Yeah, they're kind of similar in sound. Um, but I like the stability of the spruce. I believe like um. Now this one has his slotted head stuff, right? That's yeah. Like, so. Um, I, I, I gotta say, it's a pretty attractive slot head, too. That's another topic to talk about, like, the difference between a slot head and a, um, a regular head, right? The, the slot head is supposed to have a better angle, or it's supposed to... It's supposed to have the perfect angle for... Supposedly, right? And yeah, you get better, for nut slot angle. You get the most uh, even string tension that gives you really good sustain, but... I don't know, I've played uh, yeah, a lot like of... Us as players is... Me, maybe it's a subtle difference, I... I still like regular headstocks, mm -hmm. only sure. because they're easy to change. They're easy to <laughs> change. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I just uh, like the look of a slotted headstock. Yeah, I mean, it is fancy, it is like, but it really is. It takes like five minutes that? longer per string. To yeah, change. to change it. Yeah. I mean, uh, when you get the drill, the the bit attachment. I mean, that does make it a lot easier. But this means this 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 ukulele right here would work perfectly for campanella style yeah i mean i don't know just, give uh, us an example that I one so. though no, like no, no, right be, give me an example like though, um i mean there's just enough pop and like the other one the notes come on even and and sustain it's just yeah I, it, I don't know what this how to describe it it just like i was just playing around and messing around earlier and try to come a, a few campanella lines like um for example, the beginning of um, one of my favorite songs, uh, looking, through, uh, looking Through the Eyes of Love from the movie Ice Castles. I like to start it off with um, a little campanella. So after the whole intro, there's a part that goes. You know, but I do it. Um, like another song, um, there's a part in like an original tune that I wrote a while back. There's um, um wait, play the wait, just play the C string one time, like a good like hit, like no, like hit it like. Just you hear that pop and that bass response. It's like a classical guitar. Yeah, it is like it's unreal. And like whoa, because normally when you when you play campanella style, like it gets super muddy when you play up here, but this is like. This one has that shimmer effect between, like when you play those overlapping notes. I guess also because this one's a little bit more responsive too in tone. I think for my style, this would probably work better. Oh, that thing sounds one. perfect. It's just. I think when you're playing a little bit more um, movements that are like active, yeah, this works where it's like it's this really is, lively really kind of sound. And then listen to this too. It's like, but for like soft and delicate yeah. kind of stuff, like is is that th is is that one right there? Mm. That one is like the the tone on the the spruce and ebony one is more like chocolatey. Yeah, I just like how everything just blends with both ukes. This one's a little more on the warm warmer side. Down has a little bit more clarity, and they all work. Maybe um, we should put it back in, like play it back to back. Mm. Yeah. Right. yeah. There's a there's a spread that you get with redwood, you know, a spaciousness to the to the throw of it. Whereas the spruce is a little more direct. Sound hey, Kalei, try, try play the same passage that you just did, uh, back to back, like, yeah. So, um... Maybe 
it's a little bit more for this is like for a really delicate yeah like i think tobias would like tobias would like that for sure like for me like this one Two fine wines. I don't yeah, know. It's like, like, I like them both. Yeah, that one maybe works better. I guarantee you there's gonna be like it's... one customer that's gonna be staring at these two ukuleles for like an entire week, debating which one they should get. And then yeah. someone's gonna get their bread idea to just get both because I wouldn't be able to. I mean, I would probably choose this one in my opinion because that's just you know my style of playing matches. Yeah. Oh, it would be a hard. You know how ridiculous we would be if we were millionaires. We just have like so many instruments. Oh yeah, I mean we wouldn't sell nothing. <laughs> well, yeah, <laughs> we would to ourselves. We will keep all the all of Chuck's, Eric's, all of like four Ks, like Kolo Kamaka, Kolo Kanilea. These they, like what, Chuck's gonna be like, oh, how did that ukulele go? Yeah, uh, it, it was, was great. Well. I love it. We were, uh, <laughs> it looks perfect <laughs> next to my other one. <laughs> and then who does? Then what? Where does the money go if we're all three of us are bidding on it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, check, check check this out. Um, real quick, so like the the Campanella John King stuff. Like, hey, wait, 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 yeah. Corey, why don't you go sit where no, the, the camera can see you and, and they can and, hear you? Too. No, no, no. But okay, yeah, go ahead. Why don't you do it on that that redwood one? Hey, Clay, did you get a full on sound wait, sample me... of that one though? Oh no. I don't oh. feel like we had you. Yeah, let me get a song with you on that one, and then Corey can come in on that guy. Okay. So you, you played the unknown on that one and I thought it sounded brilliant. I think it would be beneficial if maybe you played the same song yeah. if somebody's comparing. I feel like you know when you were doing that this drove that the the lower end a little bit better it was a little bit more dramatic but when you were doing the um like all the other stuff like, like the more exciting parts is where this ukulele shines the spread a little bit more yeah. there is the the brightness that like you would expect this to be a little bit brighter but then the the brightness on here really works well for the more 
more uplifting and faster mm. parts. Whereas like when you did the that like the way this responded in those lower notes was like I think was a little bit better. That's cool. That would be like definitely um finger style solo solo style, yeah instrumental or instrumental music in general. This is like a Steinway <laughs> piano. because it's like to really hear these are very good ukuleles too you know yeah and that makes it easier for us as players to enjoy the songs and to enjoy the instrument when the instrument is built yeah. at a very high quality i like the frequency at which like the low end notes are produced on this ukulele do you guys feel like he should be making like a model without any adornments like as inexpensive as possible just for the just pure acoustics of it this should be, i mean this because is his thing i I, think. I appreciate the aesthetics you know i mean like i like all of that but it also does inevitably drive up cost and the amount of time invested yeah in all, you know? i mean like if there is i mean there probably is more people who would want something that sounds as good as these without you know all the ton of like detailed artwork that's on it because yeah. the instrument itself is a piece of art already yeah that's why I'm, I'm i'm thinking like um these have you know their customers that are gonna love it for looking the way it looks you yeah. know but um ultimately like to get these in the hands of players and be more accessible i i still kind of like think there's like I would almost want to talk to him about providing us with like a more baseline model that's maybe a little bit more accessible. Yeah. You know? I think after you know, like our viewers see this, they'll be you know familiar with his right, right, right. his build style and know what he's capable of doing. But when it comes to a player, all we care about is playability, intonation, and tone. Yeah, you know, but. I we mean, looking have... looking badass is awesome, you know. Too, it's just it's hard to be able to afford it for you know a lot of us. <laughs> yeah, I mean, a lot of us normal people. <laughs> hey, it's like life goals. <laughs> yeah, it's like you know, one of my dreams is to own a truck more. Yeah, right. It's like you know, you get there one day. But I gotta, I gotta like, you know complete one goal at a time <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right now you're working on your album and, working and on my album you know the so tour coming up and the tour yeah. we're gonna make a oh, i'll make it a well actually we are gonna make an announcement soon i'm 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 oh, looking man, forward to it. so so here's the thing for our for people that might be listening in asia right now i think maybe it's it's possible i'm just gonna throw it out there there's, there's a possibility that like Corey and Clay are going to be traveling through Asia doing shows and at the same time be offering a recording that is only going to be available while um, during that tour. This is this is a possibility. This is just speculation. I don't know. Rumors, yeah. you know, I mean, I guess we can say let's just 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 reveal it. Yeah. Corey and I are going on tour together. China. <laughs> We'll be in China. We're working, and also Taiwan. We're working on Japan at the moment. So, please uh, come to our concerts. <laughs> it's yeah, gonna be come, fun. Come say hi. Like I know a lot of you that are, you know, in China has been waiting for Corey to to stop by, and so we'll be up there. We'll be at the Shanghai Music Show first. So if any of you guys are planning on going, please come down. Shanghai Music Show, what's the date on that? Um, 
Um, that's going to be October, I think the October 8? 8 or 9. This is when it starts. It's kind of like the Nam show, but in Shanghai. So we'll be there. And Are you guys going to be at the show for Maoloa during that time? Or Anui Nui? Uh, we'll, we'll be up there to, for Maoloa. So. And what's really cool, too, is that like a lot of you don't know that Core is also a really, really good guitar player. Oh, they didn't know that. <laughs> like, Come on. Oh, no, you don't know that. No, I'm just like, <laughs> I ain't that good. I just uh, he's like, okay. uh, what's your what's your stage name, Corey Emmanuel? <laughs> <laughs> no, I wish I could if, own that. If Tommy Emmanuel was your dad, I'd still be a little disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. See, like if if he was, he holds the higher standard, and you know, usually, um, I don't know. Damn it, Dad! Why you gotta be so good? Why you gotta be so good? But then, I mean, my dad is also... Your dad's a, a monster player. player. He's, guitar He's player. so good. He plays, like, the real blues stuff. And all that, you know? I kind of wonder, like, if... <laughs> if I, we did a podcast with my dad, oh, how that would awkward be... that would be. Let's do it. <laughs> oh, I, I mean, like, it would be awkward and awesome. Because he would be... It would be like interviewing Uncle Terry at the same time. Just maybe... Maybe not as... Well, you know what? And I wanted to do one with my dad. That and, would be and, fun. And you know, know how like my dad can be pretty outspoken too. So, <laughs> dad, don't 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 get too nuts. But, but no, I want to interview my dad and like ask him about Vietnam and stuff. All this stuff like he barely <laughs> talked about with me. That so. be I think that would be pretty cool. My dad yeah. gets really shy in front of camera, so he probably won't say much. Serious, <laughs> yeah. dude. Yeah, Derek is one of the coolest ever. Your dad, <laughs> he's like the Shout cool out cat. To Derek. Yeah, yeah. Like you have one of those dads that like we could cruise with any time. Like, it's, oh like, yeah, he's like super cruisable. Like, my dad just keeps like joking around the whole time, laughing. Yeah. Well, that's the best part of it. Is like you can let loose, and you can. Super and... non-judgmental, <laughs> just like fun. Oh yeah, me and my dad are teasing each other all day, every day, every, you know, all the yeah. time. You know, <laughs> you know? It's, it's fun. It's fun hanging out. Hey, how's your sister doing? She's such a talented dancer, and she's doing good. She's still uh, she's working at the Alani. She's a cast member there. And cast she, member? Is she a princess? Member. Actually, something? all of the. Disney employees are Wait, what, called what cast she members. Be, she would be, um, uh, what princess would she be, Corey? Um, what's the Indian one, maybe? Oh, um, Pocahontas? No, 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 no. no. <laughs> okay, yeah. No, 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 no. Ala- the Aladdin one. Uh, what was Ariel? it? Jasmine? Jasmine. Jasmine. Who's yeah, Ariel? She could be That's Jasmine, Jasmine your sister. Woman. Ariel. That shows no, that's how a redhead. much I don't know. Is she the mermaid? Yeah. Oh, yeah. The little mermaid. Oh, maybe I was confused with the the new mermaid. Hey, Clay. Yeah. So grab the redwood one, and then let's go back and forth wait, with Corey. Let, um, let me try this piece real quick. Just a a, a small excerpt. Um,
see which one. Yeah, which one? <laughs> Frick, man. Okay. I don't. I don't know how you sound any better. Oh wait, wait. Oh, oh no. Let's see. I'm converting Corey. <laughs> <laughs> wow. You can hear a big difference with the mic. Uh, the headsets on. From this point of view, I thought the the bass response on there was a little bit better, but this one is better. That's why that's why I had a hard time. Like, oh, 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 oh okay. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know though. There's something about the fatness of the like that punch of the tone on the spruce one. Like when I really listen to the notes, every note there's like that. It's like I feel like the note is doing this, like in in a perfect. Oh yeah. Speed. Oh. Just like floating down a stream or something when I'm listening to like yeah, uh, there's like something happening that we can't explain. Like remember when Dwayne Noble first brought some of his use in your that I talked to Dwayne today. You know what about like getting the next one from him? He's another killer, man. That guy. Yeah. Can you believe we still have that last harp uke from him? I think people are afraid of it. Yeah. They just don't know what to do with it's, it. It's just, it sounds so, so intimidating. Like the craftsmanship, too. I should just like use that for my CD and then, like. <laughs> Maybe. I, I think you like, should, too. Use it for recording because nobody's really going to buy I, it. I really think, I mean, somebody will, but I, I really. You know, when I was talking to him today, he was telling me somebody was looking at it that ended up ordering through him with slightly different specs, you know? So, I mean, it's not like people aren't appreciating it and liking it and stuff but um but i mean i could ask him and stuff but i feel like one of you guys should take it into the studio it's that good that would be even i would take the time to arrange something for it no 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 even just using it with four strings just the overtones happening with the sympathetic strings i would want to use the whole instrument I mean, it's something like in a studio, it's not necessarily going to be like a video type of thing. It's like, um, but yeah, I mean, you definitely could, but I'm just saying just for like a regular four string composition, I think it sounds brilliant with yeah, yeah. just the resonance of the body. It sounds know? amazing. And then that natural regardless. reverb you get from the extra bass strings on top, the overtones. And- yeah, just... I think this setup would hey, capture that. Let me that ask you guys bit. this, because um, this might be something somebody's thinking, like in terms of overall like volume and projection, like people think of like Koaloha as like a kind of a good standard to like go off of to compare from, you know, like because um, they're pretty loud, right? Like in terms of comparison with like the Petros here, what do you, I mean in terms of volume projection, what do you guys think? I think between the two is like it's the way they project. They're both loud, mm, yeah. But it's like this projects sound in a different way. Mm. Whereas coming like, through, like you can feel it with every single note that you play. I don't know if it's a string too. It's it's you're on fluorocarbon versus a kilo strings here. It but, comes through like strong but subtle. It's interesting. Yeah, just doing that. I don't, I don't want a koaloha if you put kilo strings on there you don't get the same kind of response it's still loud but yeah i the... guess strings is a whole nother like if you put fluorocarbons on this what would it sound like I, I can only just kind of imagine in my head but i guess we we could do that at some point but ultimately These... i think it sounds pretty darn good with yeah Aquilas. they're so well built that they you don't I, don't I feel like you don't have to switch them yeah it wouldn't it wouldn't necessarily benefit from fluorocarbon strings maybe in sustain and clarity but it's like it has enough already yeah i mean like even um one thing that 
I wanted to mention earlier is that like if an ukulele can sound great with a high G, it can sound really, really amazing with the low G. Yeah, I, I think that's kind of like how you gauge. Yeah. Like the depth of I the full yet tone come across range of an instrument that like sounded great with high G that just didn't work with low G. No, every single one yeah. sounds good with the low G. If it sounds good with high G, it will. Like yeah, it, the resonance is there. Like yeah, if we put low G on this, you get a lot of depth. It it be yeah. it be a pretty kind of curious to just switch out the top. Just put a solo S on there. <laughs> sound like a classical guitar. I think. Yeah, it's getting a little late though. pretty expensive tuners do you feel the the smoothness does it seem like it's worth it oh it's super smooth on these both of them yeah both of them yeah the accuracy of yeah like just the small the rubners you know it's like it's like having this custom genius you know machinist just like making each gear and it's kind of cool that is super cool. It's kind of the way with like hoffy cases and stuff. Like mm. you know, it's like yeah, it's, it's a like small if you believe detail. Believe in quality, but, yeah. invest in it because it's 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 all those little things though. You know, everything makes a big difference. You know, one thing I like about these instruments too is like we don't need permits to ship them internationally. Like there's technically no shell or rosewoods on them, so yeah, Cites international buyers. Yeah. Don't so, need to worry game, about a thing. There we go. It's, it's, it's available for anybody. Hey, he put a lot of thought in this, didn't he? I mean, he's been building instruments for many years. You know, this is just a miniature version of what he's been doing. But, um, no, about like thinking about like rosewood and shell. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, yeah. that's genius. The, I mean, the real builders now have to be on the, that's on their radar for sure. But, um, I think it's time that we call it a night, but I I love you guys and I love Thanks you guys and, and yeah. Um, thank you guys for watching. We'll see you very soon again with more fun stuff. So, aloha.